Right, we got another battery, 36 volts, 8.8 .8 amp hours. What baffles me about this one from the start is the size of the case. Um, it's 8.8 .8 amp hours. Uh, in theory, it's exactly the same as a Xiaomi battery, uh, which would be that big. So what all this is for, I do not know, but I'm interested in finding out. What I can tell just from the outside case, it seems to be a smart BMS of some sort. As in it communicates to the controller via a TX and RX uh, line, UART protocol probably. CAN bus is relatively new and this is an old style battery. So it communicates via UART. So, it comes with a note. Usually I wouldn't read the notes because then you suffer from confirmation bias and I'll end up looking for the problems in the note and not the general problem all around. But this time, this is worth a look in. Uh, so, let's go from the top. Here are two more batteries for you to sort out. These batteries are out of various e-bikes, which I purchase on a regular basis from a charity. I haven't opened one of them, as you can see, but they all seem to have the same fault of being completely dead and won't charge. In my opinion, that this is a design fault with the manufacturer. That'll be interesting to look for. These bikes are all turned on and off from the handlebar control, but I have noticed that whenever I push one of these batteries into their housing, there is a resounding sharp crack. Now this is quite clearly the controller capacitors charging, good call. Up, and also notice there is a momentary flash on the display lights, etc. Then the screens go blank and will work normally after that. So I believe that these bikes being left standing and used long periods of time so their controller is still live, as is when this has been switched off from the handlebars, will flatten the batteries completely to the point where the BMS will not allow the batteries to charge. The owner should, in my opinion, be informed by the bike manufacturers to pull the batteries out of its housing, thus disconnecting it from the controller. Uh, if it's going to be left unattended for long periods, that makes sense. Okay, let's look at this. Um, so what the customer is saying is, when this battery is inserted into the bike, you get a small crack. Um, he's right in saying that's the capacitors inside the controller taking charge for the first time. Um, what's curious is, is the capacitors inside the controller, capacitors will hold their charge even when the battery is disconnected. Thus, when you reinsert the battery, the crack or the electrical spark sound you hear shouldn't be as dominant or as loud um, because the capacitors are still holding their current of around 36 volt battery. They're still holding around 36 volts, just under or over, depends what state the battery is in when last used. So they shouldn't really have that much sound and impact the second time around plugging it in. Let's have a quick overview. 36 volts, 8.8 .8 amp hours. It has a 30 amp discharge fuse and a 2 pin connector and a 4 pin connector. I shouldn't guess, but I will take a guess. The 4 pin I reckon is for UART communication back and forth. Um, 1 pin being plus 5 volts, 1 pin being ground, 1 TX, 1 RX. But we'll have a look at that now. And apart from that, there's not a lot going on. It's a Trans-X PST battery. Really, really overpriced and expensive for what's in you. Honest. So this one will be interesting. Hopefully I get something we haven't seen before. That'd be nice. Change. Uh, the case has been cracked by here. That could just be general use. This plastic over the years doesn't need well. It's prone to cracking. Hopefully there's not a thousand plastic clips also securing this together. Because that'd really spoil my day if it was. One, two, three. One left somewhere. There must be plastic retention clips because no way was this secured with just four screws. So this might get a bit wild in a second. I do believe this has been opened. Well, this is fun. This has been opened in the past. Maybe not by the customer, but by somebody else. Simple reason is. Plastic retention clip is snapped, retention clip is snapped, retention clip is snapped. These are the parts I was just feeding out after remove, but as you can see, someone's already been in here and removed it for me. What I can tell just from opening the battery up, them few 
centimeters then the smell coming from inside is terrible um by smell i mean burning plastic or something we'll have a look check the retention clips on the other side oh yeah someone's had a go at this and they've never seen a retention clip before so they just snap them off instead it would have been easier just to put your fingers under and even them up so i don't know who got that but i didn't do that to be honest let's have a look inside there seems to be one more screw holding it together i think let's release the tension clips probably we have two more screws just under the handle we'll pop these two out now this has the appearance of having a smart bms quite excited to see if it's just a facade and they're really overcharging on a battery or if it does have a smart bms like the bosch carrera uh, giant trance um their smart bms face but we won't know until we get that is that them all i think so sometimes it takes longer to oh oh this is special already right <laughs> Where to start you? Yeah, this looks like fun. Right. First of all, the age. Let's see if I can get a manufacturing date off this somewhere along the lines. 36 volt, 8 amp hours. The smell is atrocious. Samson 22F model cells. That is undesirable. Let's have a quick look at the discharge side of things. See if we get anything out at all. Why did they put all this in that space? It's a waste of space, basically, what they've done. We are getting, we have to side angle this a second, 9, 8, again, it's discharging, just from the multimeter taking a reading. Okay, now we have to tread carefully in case it is a smart BMS. Once you disconnect the smart BMS from this load, if it's not resettable, Getting a smart BMS to work again is an absolute nightmare. So the BMS has to have constant voltage all the time. That's what makes this repair and even diagnostic so difficult. You cannot remove power from that BMS at any point. So let's find out what type of BMS it is, first of all. Um, what I can say is Samsung haven't produced these cells for a good few years now. So this battery is quite old. Have a look at how it's constructed. Oh. There's a lot of mastic inside this. It's removing from here. And what's that port? Two seconds. Let me just remove that from this housing and this port here. Fancy. All right, now we can have a better look. We need access to the BMS first of all, and then we can go from there. The BMS is up here. It is that. It is well oversized for what it is. Well, someone has opened this up in the past, but just to have a nose by the looks of it, because there's nothing altered inside at all. This is the original manufacturer's wrap. So I know that's good. This is the world's oldest BMS. Uh, this battery is at least five to eight years old. There's my balance leads. 
Right, now the BMS is connected via its minus to the last minus of the pack as a whole, so that'll keep current there. I just need to confirm all this with myself, because these are horrible to work on. Uh, basically, the BMS is proprietary and made by the company solely for the company use. You'll never find a replacement. Um, you're stuck with buying a new battery. They tie this battery up to their bikes purposely by using a smart BMS. This BMS doesn't talk to the controller that's fitted to the bike. The bike will never work. Um, and you're looking at a controller swap out on the bike and more work. Good news is, BMS has jumper leads coming off the top of it already. So they're aware of the fact you can't disconnect power from a smart BMS. So this is a smart BMS that I cannot afford to lose power from, otherwise you'll never be powered back up again. And you'll never find one of these BMSs to replace, and it involves extra cost on repairing the bike. So, let's see what cell condition we got, first of all. First row. We've got 10 rows as usual, it's a 36 volt battery. And our first row is 0 0.01 volts. Second row. That's accurate. If that's the case, let me just double check. Yeah, we're accurate, right. So the first row is 0, 0.0. Second row is 0, 0.0. Third, 0, 0.0. Fourth, 0, 0.0. Fifth, wow. Six is 3.5. Seven is four. Row eight is nothing. Row nine, nothing. Row ten, nothing. Right, this battery is completely gone. Not so sure. Let me just make sure there's no other signs of any damage. There's not. And the only reason this battery does not work is simply due to its age. Um, these cells are too outdated now. They've been used for too long. I'd love to find an exact manufacturer's date on this though. Yeah, smart BMS with reset record function. That's a nightmare to work on, hence where they charge the price they do for their batteries. A uh, quick reference, one of these batteries online is 239 without the BMS, without the case. Um, it comes as just a cell drop-in. You have to wire your own BMS up, obviously the original BMS. That's why they don't serve it with a BMS. That kind of makes sense. And the manufacturer doesn't make these batteries anymore. So that's a bit of a nightmare as well. But good news is, there was enough power in this battery to keep that BMS alive. Um, so the BMS is still functioning. It does, let's say you can reset it, but from from memory, you never want to lose power on one of these, just in case you can't. Have a quick gander at the BMS. Yeah. Uh, they've put... A uh, penny battery in there um, to make sure even if the battery loses power completely without anything at all the BMS still retains its functions so yeah it is a smart BMS they've done this on purpose there's the TX and RX ports to talk to the controller there's your general BMS wires is your on off switch MOSFETs are perfectly fine why do they feel the need for cooling up here that's the question Okay, active balancing, this BMS does, hence the need for cooling. Uh, it's a good BMS, actually. It just needs a battery to go with it at the moment. But apart from that, this battery again needs replacing top to bottom. Um, there's nothing in it, unfortunately. But the CD would stand true. Um, the controller would drain the battery down if the battery was left into the bike and the bike was left turned on. Even more so if the controller, if the bike's wiring wasn't exactly sound. As in if the controller wiring a neutral was ground to the frame, then it would slowly discharge out of the capacitors and the battery would re-top them up 
they would drain again. It'd be a vicious cycle all month long until the battery's at zero volts. Yeah, I think it'd be more down to the controller that's done this and the battery's age. Okay, no problem. Again, advise the customer and see where they want to go from this. This would be a nice one to YouTube because there's not one YouTube video on replacing smart BMSs, or at least the whole pack and keeping the BMS alive. That's fun. It involves desktop power supply, a couple of crocodile clips, uh, 36 volt constant current. So yeah, we'll get over to the customer, see what he wants to do, and take it from there.